Hello and welcome to the Greek Eucutus on a Monk, and today we are in episode 14 of our impossible playthrough um, Let's Play. Um, if you are joining me for the first time, guys, you have missed a crazy episode. We've done an awful lot um, within the series already. We are on episode 14. Our death count is insane. Honestly, guys, I'm not even sure what our death count is right now i believe we're at around 17 deaths and for anyone that isn't too familiar with this game 17 gangster deaths in a single playthrough is kind of impressive that takes some real work we've gone through a hell of a lot of gangsters um so far and once again for anyone not familiar with this impossible playthrough and just why it is so impossible let me enlighten you we are playing without our boss they are behind a desk we are also playing without any guns of any kind we're only using melee weapons which makes things a little bit harder we're also unable to heal during combat at least we're unable to use healing items these things put certain limitations on combat for us it can be rather tricksy um we have hired some pretty good gangsters now however and i am looking to hire another gangster or two always after all we have a high turnover within our crew um in the last episode we actually managed to hire um who did we hire we hired baby monks that's it um so yeah we are looking to hire someone else um it looks like dotty just learned a was that a skill possibly no i believe she has high morale so she's become tolerant um let's see if we can recruit this one go to hire and dotty bacon absolute legend of course dotty has been in our crew once before she left because we didn't have the notoriety in order to hire her her morale dropped and so she abandoned our crew because it was run appallingly at least according to her um but now with her back in the crew i really do think that we have got something good we've got purple armor on her we've also given her one of our best weapons and i think that's really gonna make a huge impact for our game now we are getting like these top tier gangsters um i feel like we are probably able to take on a safe house um hopefully we are going to get to one of those rather soon at least that is the plan however anytime we kind of make a plan within this playthrough something typically happens which is just not the way we intended it I'm still quite impressed that Clyde is still alive. We've had this gangster for an incredibly long time. Um, so I'm really surprised. He's, I'm still, I'm actually quite surprised that Patrick is still alive as well. Both of these gangsters are really, really useful for us. Very, very good. Um, nice to talk to you. Do, 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 do. a lot of these missions we can't do because we are not using our gangster so i'm oh, sorry our our boss that's something we need to take into consideration when it comes to looking at the missions the game has for us because we're as we're not able to use our boss we can't complete a lot of these missions it also means that we can't attend a lot of sit downs as well so um anytime a sit down comes up we do have to deny it because of course we cannot attend that sit down just a heads up for anyone looking to actually oh for anyone actually looking to copy our rules yes, looks like we've got um our final on our final perk for patrick We've had Patrick a very, very long time. Looks like we are finding everyone's safe house now, which is very, very cool. Even though we've had little in, uh, interaction between many of those bosses, we've been in the game long enough now to be like passively collecting a little bit of 
hearsay knowledge so the game's kind of awarded us with with that Okie dokie, let's see where we are and what we're doing. There is a Goldie's safe house. Of course, we're unable to grab that right now. It's a bit of a shame because you can see that Goldie's empire is kind of split. So I kind of see her dying rather soon. Considering we're in episode 14, we really haven't taken over um, a lot of land. That's a depot. That one's a depot, which means that is the safe house. And we can actually attack it right now as well. At least um, we control enough land in order to attack it. Are we ready for a safe house? So that's the real question. We haven't even attempted a safe house so far in this series. Um, it's taken us a while to build up to get here. I have had to waste some time just to allow some money to actually build up. Um, we've done it a couple of times to just kind of allow things to tick over. It looks like we've got the last two safe houses as well. The Alley Cat Safe House. Now, I actually think we get a very, very good melee weapon uh, for defeating Mabel. It's one of the best weapons that we can get. Um, so, that's kind of cool. And with Bruno in arms as well, we really are looking rather strong. Praise the Lord. Bruno again has a decent health pull. Um, so if we give him a good armor, make sure we take his weapons off him. Doesn't need the medic kit either, of course. Do need to give him a pretty good weapon, however. A sledgehammer will do. Bruno used to always be one of my, like, underboss type guys. Or one of the very first gangsters you could hire back in the day. You could hire Maria, get a good relationship with her. No, I believe it was a mission. You'd get a mission with Maria. Um, and in so be able to recruit uh, Bruno incredibly early in the game. We've got Bull Rush on a couple of our characters as well. Let's actually make sure we give him some decent armor. Blue armor is required. Meat cleaver. So we got Bruno, we got Monks, we've got Dottie and Diana. Um, I can't be seen to affiliate with you. I kind of want another, another fixer because the fixers have been very useful whenever we've used them. Of course, Dotty doesn't show on this screen because the game can only display so many people at any one time. I kind of feel like we could hire... We could probably hire one more gangster. I just don't know who to go for. A con artist would be good because then we get the access to a throwing knife, maybe even a hatchet. Um, so, old Percival here... I feel like it could be a really good go. We've got Sucker Punch in. Make sure we take his weapons and his medikit off again. We don't want him using the medikit in combat. Now he only has 90 health. But for me what Percival brings is actually a range option. Which is something we don't actually have. But none of our characters have guns. Therefore you know the con artist that we have which is extremely limited. I think Percival may be the only con artist we do actually have. Um, but of course Barney does have 
that skill as well. But these guys have the um, the throwing knife, or possibly for two action points, the throwing hatchet, um, which is really going to help us within this battle, I think. Especially if we get too crowded, it really does depend on exactly what Mabel actually has um, in there. Okie dokie. Wish me luck, guys. Let me know down in the comments. How many gangsters do you believe is going to die within um, the safe house battle? What am I doing? Can't go to war with them, which means I must have a, an agreement in place. There we go, break the agreement and declare war. I forgot all about that. You're fucking joking. What? Kill this piece of shit. Oh no, I see a mistake. So just before we tried to declare war, what I done is I used bullet shield at that time. Mabel's troops were allies. We had a business agreement with them, therefore they were allies. I have buffed them, inadvertently buffed my enemy. That kind of sucks. That makes this battle a little bit tougher. I really thought the, killing the guards outside the racket was going to be a super easy, simple, straightforward thing. But as I said earlier, nothing is ever straightforward in this playthrough. All right, I'm on it. Good old Dotty. No, that's not Dotty. That's Diana. Gotcha. Disappointed she didn't do more damage there, actually. They have really, really good armor, however, so it does explain it. In fact, most of the people within this safe house are going to have good armor as well, especially, for instance, the underboss. The underboss is always someone you have to kind of, like, take special care of because those guys can absolutely hurt. And just so everyone is aware, I uh, fully know that I'm about to hit this safe house. I haven't done any of the rackets. Therefore, they are going to have reinforcements. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about that. If you've been following this playthrough, you know that we've been through this before. I go around, I take care of all of the rackets for whatever reason. Uh, people end up in hospital. I run out of meds. Too much time passes. The rackets come back because somebody else attacks the boss for whatever reason. I get bad luck. I really want to show a safe house within this episode, so we're just going to go with it. We're going to see what happens. We're going to take on everyone we can take on. And um, if we win, we win. If we lose, if we die, if we fail, or I can't run away, well, I guess that's the end of the playthrough. But that's never happened, so we're all good and golden. Booby trap. I accidentally knocked the guy out. Um, I need to remember about that knockout. It's not fun. It's not cool. It just gets in the way. We have all these gangsters and we're unable to attack him because he's on the floor knocked out. So we can't use our melee weapon. It's so silly. Yes, sir. Yeah, we 
still can't attack him. We are going to have to end our turn. Hunker down. Poison Crow's Feet. And he sloops back down again. At least we can use a bullet shield. Gotcha. At least he's back up again now. And there we go, Kushti Kushti. Okay, so we did that. And that was actually pretty easy. And we don't seem to have anyone injured as well, which I'm a little bit surprised about. Make sure we got bullet shield before going in. Wish me luck. Oh, I quite like this uh, this layout. There are a handful of safe houses within this game. And this is one of my favorite layouts. Oh dear, they have 10 reinforcements. We are up against 12 actually in at the safe house that is 22 we are up against 22 guys can we do it i think trying to make sure we handle these reinforcements are going to be key absolute key um 10 reinforcements is a lot so i'm going to make the best use of this cover that, I'm at, that I can actually do. Deep wounds. Deep wounds is not good. Deep wounds is really not good. My doctors always die. Always die. I've gone through like every single doctor in this game. And she's already down to 50% health. Not cool. Yep. Dotty in and help. Oh, applied bleeding. That's pretty cool. That is the underboss, I believe. And they have used bullet shield themselves. Oh, shucks. Okay. There we go, we got our first kill. No, I don't want to use... I don't want her to have that. What I will do, though, is try and control this doorway. Of course, we've got all those reinforcements coming in. We do have one free turn. But that doorway is how everyone's going to be coming in. It doesn't work like a depot in a safe house. You know the one and only place they're coming, so... With a bit of luck, if we can control that doorway, I think Crow's Feet is going to really help us out. Um, but we'll see. we got the plan in motion. All right, let's do it. Okay, now they've got four turns until we can use Clyde. Clyde's so slow. His initiative is not good. See if we can get Clyde a little bit closer into the battle. Okay, so next turn, those reinforcements are going to start coming in. What sure. do we do with Barney? What do we do with a drunken sailor? And Percival could come in here as well. We're going to take the office. 
believe that he he's the only one in the office. Quite surprised. Normally there's at least a couple in there. Mabel. We delay. A delay the turn. We don't need to move right now, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Now with Diana getting an execution, that means she actually gets a little bit of health. And she gets a little bit of health for the next few turns, which is kind of cool. So she should stay alive. Understood. The executions work the way I used to use bandages. So I've been trying to keep that in mind within this playthrough as much as possible. I do like how when we challenge ourselves doing these sorts of things, we are learning new ways to kind of break the game, manipulate the game a little bit. I guess not break it, but we are finding new ways to manipulate the combat scenarios, which I quite like. Considering how much time we've put into this game, it's kind of crazy. Bear trap. Booby trap. It's the same thing. Okay, so we're using Bullet Shield again just because this is turn two now, I believe. Just to make sure everyone's nice and fresh and got that Bullet Shield. Make sure it's actually in play when we need it. Just waiting to see what happens when these reinforcements come in now. So they're poisoned. They took damage from the booby trap. And their turns have been interrupted as well. Not bad. I'm going to have to pick a side. I'm going to have to start attacking these groups. Pop out of cover. Understood. Let's try and do some damage. Come on, Grover. 51 damage. Not bad. Now, baby monks. What can we do? Where can we go? We need to kind of do some more damage to Mabel, or at least start that process. Bruno's turn. Don't want these guys to get too comfortable behind me. We've got them coming in every single turn now. So I do need to get on top of them, make sure that they're being clipped. Of course, this is the turn they come in now. So... Getting a good advantage on them now is a good thing. Kind of glad that I delayed my turn on a few. Um, kind of gave us an extra turn almost. Let's get another one off the field. That is their gangster that's down. Understood. Let's go ahead and use Sucker Punch. Those guys want trouble. Well, we knocked him out and it uh, put wait, bleed wait. on him as well. The knocking out bit is fine because there's so many other options. It literally just removes him off the field for a couple of turns. So I'm quite happy with that. Baby marks. Let's get some more damage in. Hopefully, trying to remove some more of these guns. I got you. 
Same thing doing here for Diana, just trying to remove a gun. And we did it. Cool. Now Dottie should hopefully be able to do a little bit of damage. Gotcha. I think they've got bullet shield on though, which is why we're doing 12 damage. Kind of useless. But he is bleeding, so. We need Bruno actually where the action's needed as well. We managed to remove another guard from play. It looks like we got our crow's feet back, which is kind of cool. Fifty-two damage and a bleeding. Patrick, you're a beast. Another one off. We are getting through them. We are doing okay with these reinforcements uh, and with the guards. We've killed a lot more than we probably should have right now. And it's quite cool because the reinforcements at the moment, round two, they're stuck where they're stuck. Rachel was taking some damage, however. Okay, Grover's turn again. What can we do? 80 damage. That was a beautiful crit. Let's use the knife. Done damage to him while he's on the floor. He's now got bleeding too, which is cool. Did Barney? Is Barney on the floor? Barney's choking on the floor. Moving out. Do you know what? If we make it through the safe house without anyone dying, I would be extremely surprised. So the fact that Barney is on the floor does not surprise me one bit. Things were going a little bit too well. There we go, Monk's got himself a kill. Not only that, but removing that extra gun from the field. I do like it. Make sure we're keeping on with that underboss. We certainly don't want him to regen or anything like that. We want to be keeping this pressure going. Bruno, Bruno, Bruno. Sixty-six damage, huge hits. Fine. Bleeding and forty-four damage there, not bad. Now I think I'm gonna bring Patrick back a little bit just to kind of help out with those reinforcements. I don't want to get complacent. I feel like we're managing our areas pretty good. Put bullet shield on again just to make sure that these guys actually have it. Could have delayed his turn, but... Well, he made it further than any guard before him. Light him up. Still two more waves to go as well with reinforcements. It's another four guards. 
Grover to take someone else off the map. Very nice, dude. Uh, but we've got about to bleed. Only done 19 damage to Mabel. That's not cool, is it? Everyone just be able to plow on to Mabel soon. She can only do so much damage, so I figure taking out the extra guards around is probably or was the better idea at the time. It seemed to be working out well for us. And now maybe we've got times two damage, so it looks like she's about dead. Make sure that they can't walk anywhere. No, he's gonna die. Beautiful. This is all looking very easy. We're doing a very, very good job. Get Clyde up in there doing some damage too. They do have more reinforcements there though. It is getting a little bit tight in this area. But those crow's feet do their job. Rachel was pretty low on health. Grove was going to get the honor of killing Mabel. I can't believe we've done that. This has been quite easy. I'm shocked. I mean, I know we came in with a hell of a lot of gangsters, a lot of them high level as well, but... Um, I was expecting that to be a little tougher, especially as they had all of their reinforcements as well. We literally went up against 22 guards, but hey, is what it is. Now Looks like we're managing to do time. things rather, rather well. This is excellent. And Diana even managed to get an, another execution, that being her second. Get the guys coming down for this entrance because we still got a couple of reinforcements. Patrick. <laughs> He's poisoned again now too. Because he had knockback, so it forced him on a crow's feet, re-poisoning him. Rachel's down. I'm not too worried. I mean, she is my fixer. She's been doing a great job. But it's only the first round. She should be fine. At least she downed it and died. One dead. Oh, how he didn't die, I don't know. Get Grover close, but he can't do anything right now. So I think Patrick, 
and one of the guards are kind of like standing on top of each other, so I can't target him, unfortunately. I'm on it. 55 damage, that's not bad. Try and get Diana a little bit closer to the action. I don't know if she's actually going to be able to do anything. I think all reinforcements are in now too. So it's literally just what is here. But that being said, guys, we have done our very first safe house. Taken out our very first boss. I'm quite happy. That means in the next episode we can just go around gathering up our first neighborhood. You know, which I think is pretty cool. I need to move Patrick, is what I need to do. Okay. Luckily, it's his turn next. Um, can he even attack in there? Let's move him. There we go. And let's... Can Clyde attack? No, I think we're going to have to move Clyde as well. Got poisoned times two. Grover can't quite reach. Let's end the turn. Ah, oh, Barney died. Come on now, guys. Death count 18. Not cool. But there we go. We managed to do our first safe house. We have got the Widowmaker, which is um, a unique or melee weapon. Very, very strong. Applies poison. Applies bleed. Um, but there we go, guys. We have done our very first safe house. We didn't do it cleanly. We absolutely did get a death involved, but we did do it all importantly. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already and comment your thoughts down below. Any and all interaction with these videos is very much appreciated. And until next time, guys, I've been a monk who's been a critic curious. I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming. Give my regards to your sweet husband there, will ya? I'm sure he's just dying to see you again. <laughs>